One of my favorite things about this little machine is how many indies there are available on it and how good some of those games are. Like some of my favorite games of all time are by independent developers. Everybody always hears about like the big budget AAA games that are coming out, but there are so many like little games that don't have the budget to put into advertising and everything like that, that people don't hear about, which is pretty unjust actually. <laughs> Honestly, some of those smaller titles are just as, if not better than some of those AAA games. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna shine some light on them. This is gonna be 10 of the best indies available to you right now. And not just on this thing, actually. None of these are Switch exclusives. Yeah. So no matter what platform you're on, at least some of these are gonna be available to you. Don't forget to like and subscribe before we get into the video. And let's talk about the best indie games. Yeah, let's just do it. Do it! So this first one is a little bit of an obvious one, but we had to put it first because it was actually one of the first games that we ever bought and played on our Switch when we got it way back in 2017. Hollow Knight. And the reason we did pick this up is because it's like $12 or something ridiculous and on the eShop. That is, it also looked cool, obviously, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's 12 bucks. Like even if it sucked, it wouldn't have been a big deal. Yeah. But oh boy, did it not <laughs> suck. <laughs> Hollow Knight is like a Metroidvania style game. It's not an easy experience, that's for sure. Or actually has never finished it because it is so challenging. Brutal. But if you can push through, there is a good like 80 hours of content here. And again, for $12, I mean that. That's a bargain. Is value for money. Yeah. I'm sure many of you will know Hollow Knight. Its sequel is coming out this year, Silk Song. So if you're watching this and that's already out, Maybe play that one instead. I don't know. Both. Yeah, play both. both. Yeah. Hollow Knight is a quintessential indie game for anyone's collection. So a couple of the indie games on this list are a little more well known, but honestly, I don't really think that I've seen like anyone talking about Turnip Boy commits tax evasion. And that is honestly a crying shame because it is so good. It's such a good game. It's so funny. Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion is like an action adventure game where you play as a little turnip who's forgotten to pay his taxes. Classic. So he gets a massive tax bill from Mia Onion and he also gets evicted. But you can't afford to pay your big tax bill because you're a turnip. So instead he kind of just becomes like Mia Onion's little bitch boy to pay back his debts. This game is hilarious in <laughs> case you haven't already like got that vibe. <laughs> So there are heaps of dungeons that you have to complete, some pretty challenging bosses actually, and heaps of side quests, which I definitely recommend doing because all of the side quests and the other little vegetables are actually so hilarious. Yeah, dude, you kill Gary. Poor Gary. I killed Gary. Poor, I also killed Gary. Oh, I feel bad about it still, do Press the like button if you killed Gary and then comment if you didn't kill Gary. Moment of silence for Gary. There's a lot of like subtle nods to other games as well. Like there's a Zelda one. I think there's also a Twitch reference. Oh yeah, there is yeah. Like someone's a streamer. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, 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 I remember. Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion is a pretty short game, but it's really good and I honestly loved every second. So if you ever scroll across it on the eShop, definitely pick it up because it definitely deserves some more love. Next up, we've got What the Golf. Now bear with me because golf games, I get it. They're not for everyone. But this isn't really a golf game, is it? I mean, no. they take that mechanic of like aiming and like shooting a golf ball, but they just like turn it up to 11. It's just chaotic, random weirdness. Like what's one of your favorite levels? The level, so there's this level where it looks like it's a normal golf game in this particular part. And you're like aiming your golf Stick? Club. <laughs> Can you tell I don't play golf? Anyway, mm. you're aiming your golf stick and then you like pull it backwards and then you think it's all going to be normal and then you release it and all of a sudden the person goes flying yeah, instead. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, the person just goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so random and like totally not what <laughs> you would expect. Yeah, exactly. And that's just one of the examples. There's like little cars that you can race around with this golf mechanic. Honestly, it's just weird and chaotic and super unique 
and we just love it. We also felt the need to include a co-op game here, you know, being, being two of us here at some kind of gaming, we love these style of games. So it was really important to us to do that. And we've just had so much fun, just like laughing for hours on end. You will cry laugh. Friends. Yeah, you'll cry laugh like at least once. If you're just looking for a cheap, fun, great time with you and a partner or a couple of friends, then you cannot go past this. It's just a laugh, isn't it? Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just a laugh. <laughs> Get on it. <laughs> Sorry, it got really hot in here, so I'm wearing this now. <laughs> Cozy Grove. <laughs> This is a super interesting game. I remember when it first came out, it was really popular all over Instagram and everything with the cozy gamers, but it's not really something that you can session for like 10 hours at a time. So essentially you're a Girl Scout who gets sent to a haunted island. And basically since you're on the haunted island, you have to like release all of the spirits by tying up some of their loose ends and things like that. Usually it involves some kind of a fetch quest or something along those lines. The more spirits you help out, the more you can progress through your island, more places you can go, more recipes that you can unlock to make cool things, to make your island more habitable. But a lot of those spirits and things are kind of timed. So you'll have a bunch of spirits that you can help out during that day. And then once you're finished helping them out, you might have to wait till like the next day until you get some more, you know what I mean? It's kind of like- So it uses a, like a real world counter. Yeah, kind of, okay. yeah. yeah. It kind of reminds me of mobile game tactics a little bit. Oh, where you can only play like two games a day. Yeah, something okay. where it's like, oh, you've used all your moves, you're gonna have to wait till tomorrow or pay money. It doesn't yeah. have the Much. monetary side of oh, things, okay. but yeah. yeah, that idea sort of reminds me. So like a little bit like the Animal Crossing type of thing? Or it's like, yeah, that's you know, true. You yeah, this one house today, you yeah, and to then wait. you have to wait for it. Yeah, okay, that's true. It's kind of like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. I've never played this one, so like. If I look intrigued by what Laura's <laughs> saying, that that is the whole reason. Cozy Grove is just such a wholesome and cozy experience, if mm. you could imagine that. The art style is like, it looks really hand-drawn. It's kind of like watercolors. And since you can only play it a little bit each day, it's like the perfect game to come home and unwind to, maybe like a bedtime game. All right, this next one is a bit of an obvious one again, but you can't have a list of indie games and not talk about Hades, because this thing just did so well when it was first released by Supergiant Games, and it continues to do well, so much so that we have a sequel we're looking forward to this year. You've also got to include a roguelite or a roguelike in these lists, because that genre just seems to be taking over indie games at the moment. It's like True. really, really popular genre. I don't understand it, because it's not really for me. I'm not a huge fan of them, but I am a huge fan of Hades, so I guess that just speaks wonders for it. It does, it? speaks volumes. Yeah. So the gameplay loop is super satisfying, obviously with that roguelike element. When you die, you go back to the start, but you do gain things to make your next try a lot easier, or you can just switch it up and use like a totally different set of weapons. It's up to you how you play this game. So everybody is gonna have a completely different experience. It's also based on Greek mythology. You play Zagreus, the son of Hades, and he's like trying to escape the underworld. Mm. Uh, and I really like that as like kind of like a mythology buff, like especially Greek. I, I enjoy it. <laughs> I enjoy its themes. So Garden Story is the second food related game on this list today, which seems pretty random, but here we are. We like food. True. But instead of a turnip, this time you're a little grape guardian. How cute is that? <laughs> it's pretty cute. It <laughs> so it's your job to protect your town and the surrounding ones from the spreading rot. And rot basically translates to monsters. So you have to save each town by completing a dungeon in each one. And then in between the dungeoning stages, you can also work on the towns by completing little daily quests and just improving the general life of every little guy that lives there. It is really adorable. You also get paid for all of the side quests and little tasks that you do. And then it gives you the opportunity to sort of go foraging for other items that you can use to like buy new weapons or upgrade your weapons. And some of the bosses in Garden Story are actually quite challenging. So even if you look at it and you think it's super cute, it might actually still kick your butt. I actually know they had a bit of a problem with that. 
Oh. Like people looked at it and were like, oh, it's so cute. And then they're like, wow, it's tough. And like, then people didn't like it. I remember everyone thought it was like a farming sim before it came out, actually. Yeah, because it's like an RPG, isn't yeah, it? Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. With like a bit of like the town building element, like mm -hmm. you said, involved. But it's like very much an RPG. Yeah. Like, that's important to know. Ah, Tom, you beautiful little bundle of joy, you. This game is like a cozy little puzzler that's just going to want to make you, make you curl up with a cup of tea. You know, it's just one of those really cute games that make you feel wholesome and warm, fuzzy inside. Aww. So the first thing you're going to notice about Tom, which is probably the first thing you guys have noticed with this footage as well, is it's absolutely adorable use of colour, or rather lack thereof. And I've really got to give the developers credit for this because they're choosing an art style that is so far away from the mainstream. I just really love that they've taken that risk and it has paid off so well here because it is just, I mean, look at it, beautiful. So basically in Tom, you play as a budding photographer and you go out to capture this like event called Toem. But along the way, you're gonna meet a whole variety of NPCs and they're all gonna have their own problems. There's a number of different worlds as well, or levels rather. And you're just gonna solve all of their issues with your camera, which is where the puzzles come into it. But the developers actually didn't set out to create a puzzle game. So you've still got that like adventure, like mystery, like those elements okay. involve that like exploration. Tom is a pretty short experience. I'm pretty sure I finished it in like one night. Like a hundred percent in one night. Don't get me wrong, it was like a long night of gaming, like <laughs> maybe five hours or so. But it definitely deserves a spot on this list. I just I don't know. I just can't speak highly enough of this game. It really did leave a lasting impact on me, and I hope it does to you as well. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's really wholesome. It, it is. Mm. It is. That's what it is. It's just so damn wholesome. I love, I love it. So Sparrow Fair is another really interesting indie game on the Switch. And honestly, I think it's one of the best ones on this list. So Spirit Fair is about helping people that have passed away come to terms with their death and move on to the afterlife. And if you think that that sounds like really heavy and kind of sad, then you'd be right. It is. I've cried upwards of like five times in this game, but I don't want to, you know, be all depressing and like put you off because it is truly an amazing game. It's like an experience. Spirit Fair has crafting mechanics, farming, cooking, almost like town building elements as well. There's also some platform on some of the islands that you go visit. Honestly, like Spirit Fair kind of has it all to be honest, except combat. There's no combat. So the last game I'm going to talk about today is quite similar to the first game I talked about today, actually, in that it's another Metroidvania, just as good as the last one. I'm talking about the Ori series. Now I am talking about both games because they do tell like a cohesive story and I definitely recommend playing both of them. But the second one is better. You might just enjoy it more if you did play the first one. So where do I even start with this? Laura picked Ori up on the eShop because it looks beautiful, which it does. Like mm -hmm. this art style is phenomenally good. And then we got hooked on it because its gameplay is amazing. Mm -hmm. And the soundtrack. That's what I was getting at. <laughs> For me though, like as amazing as the art and the gameplay is, the soundtrack. One day we're gonna do a best game soundtracks video and sneak peek because Ori and the Will of the Wisps is probably gonna win that. I know I'm sticking with this theme here, but it left a lasting impression on me. I cried and I didn't cry because of what was necessarily going on, even though obviously it was sad. I cried because the music made me feel something. And oh, I don't know, I think I'm getting a bit too serious here, but like, it's freaking incredible, dude. <laughs> Like, just <laughs> listen to the soundtrack. You don't even have to buy the game. Just listen to the soundtrack. That will convince you. Definitely buy the game, though. Yeah, yeah, no, no, definitely <laughs> buy the game. Stardew Valley. Where do I even start with Stardew Valley, honestly? 
If you've made it this far in the list, I'm sure that you knew it was coming. I know that you actually said it before, but I was going to say that this is the penultimate indie game on the Switch. Um, yeah, fair enough. I think we saved the best till last here, so I'm, I'm not arguing with you. It's one of the first games that I recommend to anybody who gets a Switch, and it's one of the only games that I always keep coming back to. You know those like games that really mean a lot to you that when you're maybe not sure what to play next, you always go back to that one game, you know? You're like a safety net. That's Stardew Valley. So Stardew Valley takes a lot of the elements that you'll already be familiar with from other farming sims like Harvest Moon, for example, but it makes them even better. You have way more creative freedom in Stardew Valley on your farm and everything like that. You can make your paddocks whatever shape you want them to be. You can like change the color of all of your buildings to make them fit your aesthetic. You can honestly do like anything with your farm. If you like do a quick Google search on Stardew Valley farms, it will bring up like hundreds of amazing and creative ways that people have set up their farms. There's so many parts and pieces to Stardew Valley and it's really hard to explain a farming sim to somebody because once you start explaining it, they just always sound boring. But honestly, Stardew Valley is definitely one of the best games, not just like the best indie games on the Switch, but one of the best games on the Switch. And also I just have to personally bring up Every time I talk about Stardew, I have to remind people that this thing was created by one person. Yeah. It's Everything. Insane. So I know this video has indie in the title, but coming back to what Laura said just then about Stardew Valley, these aren't just 10 of the best indie games you can get right now. These are 10 of the best games you can get full stop. That is for sure. And indie games are always like so unique. That's what I love about them is you might be scrolling through the eShop and you're like, ah, oh, that game looks like a little weird and then you think maybe you won't get it because it won't be any good. But honestly, you've got to try these things because how else can you expand your gaming horizons if all you get are like the big budget triple A titles that come out, like only first person shooters, only this or that. You've just got to dabble. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I feel like a lot of these studios aren't willing to take the risk as mm. well. But like there is innovation happening in gaming all the time. It is happening in the indie scene. You always have that rhetoric of, oh, there's nothing to play, or, you know, oh, they're all just like, you know, cinematic action adventure experiences. And like, yeah, that's like kind of true, I guess, if you're just looking at like this tiny little part of gaming. But then there's the indie scene, dude. There is stuff happening. I guarantee you there is an indie game that you will wholeheartedly love until your dying breath <laughs> and hopefully one of these games is for you as tom was saying there's a big wide world of indies out there so i'm sure we miss some and if there is an indie game that you think that we should have put on this list leave it in the comments because i'm always down for broadening my horizons i think we're going to do a, a second one of these videos as well so if you didn't sit here let us know what we should put in the second one yeah don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave if you're still here Thank you so much. We love you. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Get on it. Yeah. Get down on it. Get down on it. Anyways. Yeah, anyway. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs>